All right, so here's my wood router, and I'm uh, building this up so I can make uh, speaker cabinets. And some things that are unique about this is that I can not only have stock in horizontal position, but I can have it in a vertical position over here. So I can do custom finger joints on the, all the edges. So what I've been using, what I've been working on for quite some time is creating an operator interface that is, this is what this is. We'll talk about this in a minute. But it interfaces down to this uh, Mazo G3. This is a five axis CNC controller. And I have it in this, I have it in this uh, plastic enclosure down here with a plus 24 and a plus five power supply and a ton of wires. It doesn't look very pretty, but it's fine. This will mostly be closed most of the time. And then up here, well, we'll just go ahead and turn it on. So come down here, turn it on. And this guy's gonna boot up. So the first thing you're gonna notice is it's blinking the red light, which means I gotta do an e-stop switch check, which means I gotta press the e-stop in. And then that lets it the uh, let's let you know that the e-stop switch is actually functioning correctly. So down here I have wired into the front of the Maso or some keyboard switches with uh, uh, generic vanilla um, keycaps on there. We used a fiber laser to kind of label these. So these are greens. These are um, Cherry MX greens. So first thing I'm going to do is do a home. And what you're gonna, what the machine's gonna do is it's gonna come over and go to the home position and get set back to where it knows where it is in the in the three-dimensional space. So this this is a it's called an open builds work bee, and it's got some mechanical limits, which is in both X, Y, and Z. Okay, so now it's in the home position, and from here. We come over here and I'll show you, this is the jog wheel right here. This is the axis select. We don't have labels up here yet. And this one's actually the jog speed, cycle start, feed hold, and again, the e-stop. So I'll go over here and I'll select X and then we'll see if I can handle this out here. Actually, we're gonna do Y so I can move this away from where we are. There we go. Okay, so it's moving away. So I'll click it back over to X. And you'll see that the, that's X and then Z is up and down. Uh, a couple things that are over here. You can have a bunch of different functionality coming in on that mass. So it's got like 20 inputs. So I have these assigned to different functions. This one is go to park position which is gonna run the machine out farthest away from the home position. And this is so you can load your stock and do some other, you know, some other stuff. Kind of keep it away from the work surface. Then I have go home, which is gonna bring it back to the home position. But we'll go ahead and stop it right there. You can stop it at any time by hitting the feed hold. And then I also have a uh, crosshair laser laser pointer right here that's mounted, and I can turn it on. And then from here, I can I can use this crosshair to uh, zero the work the uh, work surface, and I can also take measurements. So if I wanted to measure something, I could just lay it down on this this board and use this crosshair along with the X Y positioning for the coming out of the CNC controller to take some measurements. So we'll go ahead and run a job here. If I can do this with one hand. Come over here to load file. And we're gonna go back down and load this. We'll load this circle in C file, which is cutting a uh, pocket right here. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is, we're gonna come over here to this. Um, uh, jogging and 
and uh, actually we're just going to set this to the zero zero point right here. We're going to zero it where it is. So what's going to happen is when I hit the, we'll go ahead and run this thing. So what's going to happen is that work area is about six inches in, six inches in X and six inches of Y from, from where we are right now. So I should be able to come and hit the cycle start. It turns on the spindle. It's going to run out to that position. It's going to start cutting that pocket. And what you're going to see over here is where it is on the interface. So I'll go ahead and turn this off here. So there's one last thing. Oops, let me uh, turn off that spindle. So there's one last thing that's not working correctly and it kind of is aggravating. We get this all together and I'm ready to button it up and it turns out that the back of this touchscreen interface USB um, connector is kind of flaky. So I got to replace this. Got to take that display out and replace that. Let me show you some things I thought about a lot about how to how to wire this up and actually mechanically attach it. First of all, we're using a piece of three inch PVC tubing pipe here and I bolted it right to this frame. I used three inch PVC tubing because I wanted something that was stout. And then I used a toilet flange up here on the bottom of this thing. So this toilet flange over here has a a thermal uh, G, uh, M5 thermal insert. I'm using an M5 thumb wheel so you can attach this and then you can also loosen this this thumb wheel and um, or thumb screw and actually rotate this whole thing for whatever wherever you want this operator interface to be. And then back here instead of having a handheld pendant what I did was I mounted on a pendant typically you have axis select your jog wheel your speed, cycle start, cycle um, feed hold, and the e-stop on a handheld pendant. But I wanted those mounted up here. And instead of wiring all these down, you know, and having a mess of wires go down through this hole, I used a, um, the most pendants, well, this pendant on this uh, Mazo G3 is expecting a DB15 connector. So I bought a DB15 breakout board, and then I'm just running a straight, uh, DB15 extension cord from here down through this hole and then all those wires come out down here and there's still a bunch of additional mess of other wires that are going to down for those switches and a bunch of other stuff like the lights on top there's actually three lights on top and for that I'm using a DB25 breakout board so what I have over here is just a straight DB25 connector which is um, like an old serial connector, old serial cable, and it runs down through here. So I needed a three inch piece of pipe to run these big DB connectors down. And that spared me from having, you know, all these wires having to go down through here and do wire management. So basically there's only a few wires that are going down through this hole. And then over here, I run the wires. This is kind of a mess. I'll kind of clean this up a little bit. Um, this is running into a vent uh, for one of these boxes and then on the inside of that I just I cut the hole out of the vent so all the wires run in here and then when this thing is kicking out a lot of dust the dust is not getting in the box because every all the wires are going up from the bottom and then it comes in here and and uh, plugs in that the, you can't probably can't see this but back in here is the the DB15 connector that's going up to the all the pendant mounted parts up there. And then this over here, this this Mazo G3 is really wide and it, it wouldn't fit the VGA cable for the touchscreen and the DB15 connector over here was, wasn't enough width. So I bought a, a, a right angle um, VGA adapter here, which allows me to slide this whole thing a little bit over. Down here is the the reciprocal of the DB25 connector and all these are running up to all these inputs up here and various outputs. So all the wires are fed through, you know, massive cabling that you can actually buy off the shelf and not have to worry about labeling all these wires if they went up to the top. 
So right now it looks pretty good. It works really well. And the uh, Mazo interface has come a long way um, since I've had this controller. But now that I have this over here, we can actually put this machine to work and, and start building some speaker cabinets. Okay, thanks for watching.